Today in the studio, I'll show you how to create, preview, and send emails from your Rails app. Hey folks, Mike Clark here with the Pragmatic Studio. I recently updated a Rails app and was reminded of some of the nifty new features in Action Mailer. So today, I'll walk you step by step through my workflow for sending emails from a Rails app. Let's jump right into it. Our application lets users list items for sale. We have a number of items here. I'm just gonna click on the unicycle. And then users can also leave comments about a specific item. So we've got three comments about the unicycle here. Now when a comment is posted, we want to send an email notification to the user who listed that item for sale. So let's just take it step by step. First, we need to do a wee bit of configuration. So let's just get that out of the way. We're gonna be sending emails from the development environment. So I'm in the config environments development.rb file where we can configure our development environment. I'll show you how to set this up for production a bit later. So the first thing I like to do inside of here is change this line here about raise delivery errors. It's by default set to false. I like to set that to true. By default, Rails will silently ignore any errors related to sending email, which isn't very helpful. Setting this to true will raise an exception if there's trouble sending email. Next, we need to arrange things so that our emails are delivered out into the world by an SMTP server. We'll use Gmail since most folks already have a Google account. And I'm just gonna paste some configuration in at the bottom of this file inside of this block here, give a little bit of space. And I've already got this prepared, I'm just gonna paste it in and we'll walk through it. Now don't sweat the details here. Here are the important parts. First, we set up the delivery method to be SMTP. That's the protocol for sending email. Then we have some SMTP settings inside of a hash here. We've got the address, that's gonna be the SMTP server we're using, in this case it's Gmail, and also the port, in this case 587, which is a pretty standard port. Then you set your domain. In this case, I'm just gonna leave it at example.com. You're gonna change this to whatever your domain name is. Most of the time you're gonna use plain authentication. Don't worry too much about this, it's a pretty standard setting. And then we have our username and our password so we can authenticate with our SMTP server. Now it's a best practice to access credentials such as username and password via environment variables, as we've done here. To get a hold of environment variables in Ruby, we use this env constant, and then we give it the key for the environment variable that we're interested in. In this case, I've got an environment variable called gmail underscore username, and this will access that environment variable and return the actual value. Otherwise, if you hard code your secret credentials in this file, then they're no longer a secret. Anyone who has access to your code, for example, on a public GitHub repo, can plainly see your username and password. Environment variables also work great for video training. The takeaway here is you never want to expose sensitive information in your source code. Finally, down here at the bottom, we need to set this host option, which is used to properly generate absolute URLs within our email. And in development mode, I've just set this to localhost colon 3000. So that's the address that's gonna be in the URLs that show up inside of our emails. After saving this file away, we must restart the Rails server for these changes to get picked up. The next step is we need to create a new mailer to render and send the email. Now Rails includes a generator to make it easy to create new mailers. Over here on a terminal, I'll just use Rails G, and then I'll just type in mailer and see what options we get. We scroll back up to the top of that. The mailer takes the name of the mailer. This is gonna be a class that it generates, and it also takes an optional list of what it calls methods here. These are actually the names of the emails, and the names of the emails will correspond to method names. Okay, so we can generate our mailer, Rails G mailer. The name of our mailer is gonna be called comment mailer, because it's related to sending mails about comments. And then the name of the email is gonna just be called new underscore comment. If you had other emails, you would just continue to list the names of those emails here, but we just have one email. So I'm using new comment. And you can organize and structure these however you want. Then we just hit return and it generates all the files we need, which we'll look at in turn, starting with the files it generated in this app slash mailers directory. Back over in our editor, I'll go into app mailers. And we see that it generated two files, applicationmailer.rb and commentmailer.rb. This application mailer is the base class that all other mailers are gonna inherit from. We notice that it inherits from action mailer colon colon base. And then the first thing it does is it calls this default method and passes in some options. Any of these options will be applied to all of our emails by default because it's defined up here in this base class. 
The from option is the email address you want to use as the sender of the email. It's the address it's being sent from. So for example, you might change this to something like support at example.com or whatever your domain is. Then on the second line, it sets up this layout. We'll return back to this a little bit later. It also generated this comment mailer. Notice that the comment mailer inherits from the application ma mailer, which we were just in. Now these mailer classes work similarly to Rails controllers. They inherit from a common base class, in this case, application mailer. They also have methods inside of them. Notice that this method corresponds to the name that we gave at the command line, new comment. And those methods are similar to controller actions. But instead of generating an HTML response, mailer methods generate an email. So this new comment method is gonna generate the email we want. We also see that this stubbed out method includes this at greeting instance variable. And instance variables defined inside of mailer methods are accessible in view templates, just like you would expect with a controller action. And the last line of these mailer methods must call this mail method to actually create a mail message and return it. Now you notice we can also pass in options to this method. In this case, we have the option to. This is the person we wanna send the email to. And to create that email, the mail method is gonna render some email templates. Now the generator went ahead and created two email templates for us to render that mail message. And those templates are over in app views. The name of our mailer is comment mailer, so there's a directory there. And then we have two templates. Notice that the name of the file includes the name of the email. It's new underscore comment. And then we have new underscore comment dot html dot erb. That generates an html email. And new comment dot text dot erb. That generates a plain text email. If we look in the html template, well, we see it looks just like any other view template. We've got some static text, and then we can generate dynamic text using ERB, for example, here, they're outputting the value of the at greeting instance variable. Because that instance variable is defined in the new comment method, we have access to it here. And the plain text template does pretty much the same thing. It just outputs the email in plain text, uses the instance variable again. It's a good practice to send both plain text and HTML emails and let the email client decide which one to display and Action Mailer does all that heavy lifting for us. Because we have two view templates here with the same name but different content types embedded in their file names, both templates will get rendered and sent out in one multi-part email. Since we're already here in the plain text template, let's go ahead and change it so that it generates an email content we want. I generally like to start by defining what the email will look like and then we'll backfill and set everything up. So I'll just delete what's in here now. And we want the email content to be a new comment was posted for your, and we want to insert the item name right here. To do that, we're going to need an instance variable that references that item. I'll create that in just a second, but I'll just go ahead and set it up now. We'll have an add item instance variable, and then we can access its accessor name to get its name. And then we'll put the actual comment body down here, so we'll use ERB again. And we're going to need the comment that got created to do that, and we'll set that up in an instance variable called comment and then we'll reference its body. Then it would be handy if we generated a link back to the items page. So right here, I'll just put to reply to this comment, please visit the item page at, I'm gonna use some ERB down here again, but we want the URL that references that item page. Well, we've got route set up so we can use a named route helper method. Item underscore URL, passing it the at item instance variable will generate the URL back to that item show page. Now it's important here to use the underscore URL variant of these named route helpers, which generates an absolute URL rather than using underscore path, which will just generate a relative URL and the email client needs a full URL to get back to our application. Save that away. So that takes care of the plain text email. For the HTML email, I'll go into that template and I'm just gonna paste this in. It's pretty much the same thing as the plain text email, except that we're using HTML tags in here to give this a little bit more structure. Notice the comment bodies in a block quote. We can use paragraphs, for example. And then down here, when we're generating the link to the item show page, we can actually use the link to helper. So just like any other view template, we can use helpers inside of our mail templates. Now, both of these templates require an at item and an at comment instance variable. So we need to go set those back up in the mail method. That's over in the comment mailer that we looked at before, down inside of the new comment method here. I'm gonna remove greeting. And we know we're gonna need an at comment instance variable. I'll assign that in just a second. We also need an at item instance variable. The item is going to be the item that's associated with that comment because a comment was posted for a specific item and we've got a relationship in the database set up so that we can get a hold of that item. 
But where is this comment going to come from? Well, unlike a controller action, a mailer method doesn't have access to request parameters. So we, we're not going to get it from the URL. Instead, we're just going to pass it into this method. This is going to be a argument to that method comment, and then we'll assign it that way. Next, we need to fix up this to option. Who do we want to send the email to? Well, we want to send it to the person who listed this item for sale. And to do that, we take our item, we can get the user, there's a relationship in the database between an item and a user, and get that user's email. We also want to set up a subject for this email. Now, you notice the comments up above, if you want to support multiple languages, you can put the subject inside of an internationalization file. For right now, I'm just going to set the subject directly. Down here, we just give it the subject option, and we're going to say new comment for, I'm just going to stick this on another line so we've got enough space, new comment for, I'm going to interpolate the item's name. The mail method takes a number of other options, and I'll link to the documentation for that in the notes. We don't need to specify who the email is coming from when calling this mail method here, because remember, back up in our base class, application mailer, we have this default, and it's setting up the default from option that'll be applied to all of the mailers that we have set up here. So we set it up in one spot, all the emails are gonna come from that sender. Our mailer and our templates are good to go, but before actually sending the email, I like to preview those plain text and HTML templates just to make sure they look right. Now in the old days, you know, like a couple of years ago, you would install a gem to actually preview the emails, but nowadays it's all built into Rails. So let's give that a try. When we ran the generator, the preview file was generated down in this test directory under the mailers directory, and it generated a stub test file for us, but if you go up above and you open up this previews subdirectory, you'll notice that it generated this file, commentmailerpreview.rb. And inside of here, we have a class whose sole responsibility is just to let us preview this email. It has a method called new underscore comment, but that's not the same as the new underscore comment method that we have up in our mailer. This is basically just a wrapper around calling commentmailer.newcomment, where our actual mailer method lives. There's something a little bit unintuitive about this though. Notice it's using the class comment mailer and it's calling the method on that class. So it's calling new comment as if it's a class method. But if you look back up in our mailer, we actually define this method new comment as an instance method. Now don't let this throw you. Rails uses a sleight of hand here. What it actually does is it instantiates a new instance of this class and then it calls the instance method new comment on there. Now the way we have this set up, we need to pass a comment into this new comment method. So we need a comment there. So how are we going to do that? Well, interestingly to note is that although these preview files live under the test directory by default, when you preview an email, it's actually running inside of the development environment. So we can grab a comment from our development database. I'm just going to grab the last comment. Then we pass it into this method and it's going to return a new mail message. So how do we preview the email? Well, Rails actually exposes the previews as URLs. If we go up to the top of the file here, it says preview all emails at, and I'll just copy this address. Back over in the browser, I paste it in that address, and we see that we have our comment mailer, and then we have a link to the new comment email. If you have other emails inside of that class, you'll just see a list of links. We'll go ahead and click on this. And you notice it's showing us our HTML email, which looks pretty good. A new comment was posted for your unicycle, which is a link. We've got the comment body right there, and then we've got the item page link so a person could get back to that item page. You can also go look at the plain text email up here. That looks pretty good too. It just has the URL as plain text, and we've got the plain text version. So that's pretty nifty. And you know, now that I see these, I realize it would be really nice to add a standard signature to the bottom of all the emails. You know, maybe your standard company signature. Now, one way to do that would be to add the text to the bottom of our actual mail templates. There's our HTML template, we could add the signature right down here, or our plain text template, we'd have to add it down there. But then if we came up with new mail methods, we'd have to remember to add the signature to those templates as well. So there's a better way. Just like controller views can have layouts, mailer views can also have layouts. And if we look back up in our application mailer base class here, we come back to this line layout mailer. And since it's defined in this base class, it's going to apply to all the mailers or subclasses, although you can override it on a per email basis if you like. Now, the layouts live down in the app views layouts. 
there's the rest of the layouts for our application, but we also have two new layouts. We have mailer.html.erb and also mailer.text.erb. Those correspond to our HTML or our plain text emails. So in the plain text version here, we see that it is calling yield. Just as with controller views, calling yield is gonna render the view. In this case, it's gonna be the mail content inside of this layout. But then we can do anything before or after this or basically around that yield. So this is great. It means we can set up our signature. I'm gonna keep my signature really simple. It's just gonna be thanks. And in the HTML version, I'll just go down inside of the body, but after the yield and use a paragraph, just like that. Now, if we save both those away, go back and reload our previews. It defaults to the HTML email. You see we have the signature there. If we look at the plain text version, well, we've got our thanks signature down there as well. So now any emails we generate will have a consistent signature. I really love the fact that we can now preview emails using the same rapid feedback loop as any other view template in Rails. Everything looks good, so now we're ready to actually send an email out into the world. Now, just to make sure that everything is configured properly, I like to hop into a Rails console and just fire off one email from there. And to do that, we're just gonna use the same two lines of code that we used in the preview file. First, we're gonna get a comment from our development database. It's gonna be the last comment. And then we're gonna use our comment mailer, and we're gonna call that new comment method and pass in the comment. Again, this feels odd that we're calling it as a class method when we know it's defined as an instance method, but just go with it. And remember that that new comment method calls the mail method at the end, which creates a new mail object and returns it from that method. So I'm actually gonna assign that returned object to a variable, I'll just call it mail over here. Hit return. And you notice we get back this mail message object. So the new comment method created this object and returned it but it doesn't actually send the message at this time. If we look inside of this object, we've got this content type multi-part alternative. This tells the email client that the email contains multiple alternative representations of the same email body. And then the client can choose to display whichever format it prefers. Now, ActionMail are new to include two parts because we have two email templates. Remember, we've got a plain text template and an HTML template. And we can see up here that it actually rendered both of those to generate this one multi-part email. That's a really good example of the power of conventions. So now that we have the mail object, we can actually deliver that mail. We'll take the mail object and we just do that by calling deliver underscore now. And that actually sent out the email. If I scroll back up, you see the result of rendering those two templates. It filled in all of our dynamic content for us and sent that out and we're left with our mail message. Now more conventionally, you might do this in just one step. So let's do this again a little bit differently. We'll grab a different comment. This will be the first comment. And we'll just do this in one step. To do that would be comment mailer dot new comment, pass that comment in, and then we know that that returns a mail object, so we can just turn around and call deliver underscore now on it. Now when we use deliver now, it's a synchronous call. We have to wait until the email is actually sent. Alternatively, you can use deliver underscore later, and that will queue up the email to be sent in the background using active job instead of delivering it immediately. We don't have a queuing system configured, so we'll save that for another time. So we sent two emails, so we should have two emails in our inbox. I actually set things up so that the email associated with the user who owned that item is a test account in my Gmail account. Here's that Gmail account on my inbox. We have two emails. The first one was the first comment I sent, which was, did you lose the other wheel? If we look at the other one, so the most recent comment, how many wheels does it have? So our email actually got delivered out through the Gmail SMTP server. So with the mailer complete, the final step is to hook it into our app. We want to send the email whenever a comment is posted, and that happens over here in the create action of the comments controller. It saves the comment away right here, and then right after that, we wanna send out that email. And I actually copied the line we just used in the console, because it's basically the same thing we want here. We call the comment mailer class, the new comment method passing in a comment, except this time we don't have a comment variable, we have to use the at comment instance variable. That's the comment that just got created. And then we go ahead and deliver it. We'll save that away and give it a try in the browser. Back over here on the unicycle show page, we'll just add the comment, where are the handlebars? Post that comment. All right, the comment was created, so we should have an email in our inbox. Back over in my Gmail account, we've got a new mail message and it says, where are the handlebars? So that got delivered. Okay, so we have everything configured to send emails in the development environment, but what about when you go into production? 
Well, let me show you how to set up some production settings for sending emails. As a starting point, we'll just go back over to our config environments development.rb file where we have the development settings set up and just snag all this code where we set up the SMTP server and configuring that host option. We'll just copy that and then production level settings go in production.rb. So go down to the bottom of that file, give ourselves a little space there. I'm just going to paste those in. So what needs to change here? Well, we're always going to be sending in SMTP as the protocol. In terms of the SMTP settings, in the development mode, we used Gmail. Now, Gmail limits the number of emails that you can send, so it's pretty good for low volume transactional emails. But in production, I'd recommend using another SMTP relay service such as Mailgun or SendGrid or Mandrel. I'll include some links to these services in the notes. They can handle larger volumes, they keep your emails from being filtered as spam, and can also just track the email deliveries. Most of them have free plans that allow a reasonable number of emails per month as well. So you're just going to change the address from smtp.gmail.com to whatever address your service is. The port's probably going to stay the same, your domain's probably going to stay the same, and then you have to change your username and your password depending on which service you're using. Again, I would highly recommend you store those in environment variables. In terms of this host option down here, we do need to change this. This isn't going to be localhost because we want this to be our live production server. So in our case, it would probably be something like pragmaticstudio.com. That way the URLs that get generated in the emails have the actual domain name to get linked back into your application. But that's pretty much all the changes you're going to need to make to send emails inside a production environment. That wraps up this session. Hopefully this helps you get started sending emails in Rails or upgrade your app to take advantage of some of the new features. As always, if you found this helpful, please leave a comment below. We'll see you next time.